from CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. And good morning to you. It's a very active morning already on that first alert Doppler. Heavy storms pushing through as we head into the next couple hours. I'm going to time these out for you coming up in the full forecast. And we're in Gilroy. The lanes here on Highway 101 are now back open, but this is after the stretch was completely flooded. I'm Jocelyn Moran. I've got a live update coming up. And Jocelyn, we're here in South San Francisco where a piece of the roof has come off an apartment complex. We'll have more of that damage coming up. Justin. Down trees and thousands without power in the South Bay. I'm Justin Andrews tracking it all. Gianna. And we'll be tracking your commute with a lot of that debris and flooding still in the roadway this morning. I'll have your top traffic trouble spots coming up. And later, President Biden facing some sharp new questions this morning. Why his handling of classified documents is getting the attention of the Justice Department. But first, we have declared another first alert weather day. People are bracing for the chance of more flooding waterways around the Bay Area and beyond are already swollen. But the latest round of rain pushed things over the edge. Just look at this flooding neighborhood. Some of the most dramatic impacts from the storm right here in Gilroy, where a stretch of Highway 101 turned into a rushing river. Caltrans crews have been pumping out water and both sides of the highway reopened last night. So let's show you this PG&E map once again, because we still have a lot of people without power here in the Bay Area. Right now, more than 4,500 customers are in the dark this morning. Most of them are in the North Bay and on the peninsula. We have live tea coverage for you this morning with everything that you need to know to get your day started. Our Jocelyn Moran is live in Gilroy for us and Sean Chitness is in South San Francisco at something you really got to see to believe. And Justin Andrews is in San Jose tracking what's going on there. But first I'm with first alert meteorologist Jessica Birch for why we called another first alert weather day. And the big question right now is people are heading out the door. What are we going to be seeing? You know, it's interesting because today's storm is so different from yesterday's already. Here's what I mean by that. As we take a look at the first alert Doppler, see all that purple off in the distance. That's that front leaning edge of a cold front that swept its way through the Bay Area earlier this morning. Actually, within the past four hours, around 2.30, we saw it really settle its way into the Bay Area. If you're a light sleeper, you probably woke up to those heavy winds and very severe thunderstorms. I actually had to wait to go to work because I knew that that radar was showing very active conditions during that time. But I will say this, now that that frontal system has moved through, we're left with just some scattered showers all throughout this morning and even into this afternoon with some heavier pockets of rain and even some lightning potential as we extend into the next couple hours. So I want to zoom in a little bit closer to home right now. Some heavier pockets of rain already starting to form just near San Francisco County. Within the next five or 10 minutes, this heavy band right here is actually going to push its way through the whole city, off into the bay, and then even off into the east bay. We're also seeing some heavier activity currently just near Vallejo, tracking off into the east. Not a lot of activity going on right now in the south bay, but we are under a flood watch, which means there's the potential of some severe flooding within the next couple hours and even throughout this afternoon. It will expire tonight, though, so we'll have more on that in a bit. For now, does that impact the roads? How are things looking? Yeah, we still have some closures because the flooding like Highway 37 parts mm -hmm. of the South Bay as well on 87. So if you're getting ready to get up early, head out the door for your commute, definitely be careful out there. It's a little windy and there's a couple things you definitely want to keep your eyes peeled for because it's still pretty dark out there and you come up on these trouble spots very quickly. Here is a live look at the Bay Bridge. We are certainly starting to see more and more people on the roadways for that morning commute with those metering lights on as you head into San Francisco, but you are still dealing with slick surfaces as well. So be cautious. Let's talk about some of these closures westbound 37 between Atherton Avenue and 101 Novato Boulevard. That's as you head westbound. That is the commute direction towards 101. There is a traffic alert in effect that is closed due to roadway flooding. Stick with the Richmond San Rafael Bridge as an alternate. If you're taking uh, that connector from 80 westbound from Highway 4, there is a trouble spot there and it's actually blocking that connector road. So 80 is really backed up as you work your way into Hercules this morning, almost to the Crockett area. So definitely give yourself some extra time there. Trouble spot on 87 as well. I'll have more on that coming up in my next report, Amanda. And Gianna, we're seeing a lot of damage around the Bay Area and the intense winds are bearing the brunt of it, along with down trees and power lines. Sean Chitness is in South San Francisco for us live this morning, where the wind really played a role in some damage you're seeing there. 
Yeah, Amanda, good morning. And we certainly know that the winds are much calmer right now, but we have been noticing some changes in the condition. The rain has also come through, but take a look at what has happened behind me here. We understand that overnight the winds got strong enough and a lightning strike pushed off a piece of lightning that then landed here on the street next to what are multiple buildings. There are at least four or five in this area that circle around this area. So as you look at that there, you will see um, what is almost a tarp like structure, some metal that is sticking out and altogether th that piece of the roof or those pieces of the roof are taking up at least two to three parking spots. Uh, we know that the fire department came through here overnight, so it may be the case that they were able to push this aside so that cars can still continue to move through this area. There are several cars that are parked uh, in this street that surrounds multiple buildings and it looks like like all of them um, were able to avoid any damage. From a neighbor who was walking by earlier this morning, he explained to me that his understanding is that there are folks that were inside the building at the time when the fire department came through. They were informed that they were encouraged to evacuate but didn't have to. Um, in the hour plus that we've been here, we haven't seen anyone coming out. But again, really significant to see such a large piece of the roof just sitting on the floor there. And at least so far, it appears that no a person was injured and no additional property damage that has happened beyond what came off of that building. Amanda, back to you. And uh, Sean, it's going to be interesting to see if residents choose to leave because of possible water damage now that can happen to that apartment without that roof on. So probably going to be an interesting morning for a lot of people waking up there. Sean, thanks so much for that report. Gianna. All right, thanks, Amanda. Severe flooding caused the stretch of 101 to be completely shut down for quite some time yesterday. In fact, cars were almost, you can see that in the video there, completely submerged in water. It was a very scary scene for anyone who was caught in that situation. This was right during the afternoon commute as well. Our Jocelyn Moran is live with us this morning in that area. Jocelyn, the good news is lanes are open, but how have homes been impacted in that area? Yeah, Gianna, we know people were impacted in this area. It was a very scary situation, whether you were driving along this area or you live in this area. Before we get into that, I do want to mention that we did just get a downpour of rain about 10 minutes ago. Now it is a little bit sprinkling, but now again, these uh, roadways are wet. So this is Highway 101. We know it's looking pretty differently than it did yesterday. Uh, this is a major stretch because a lot of people use it, you know, to commute, as you can see here. So you can you can imagine just the impact that this had. I want to take you to some video now. You can see at least one home here that was completely submerged in water. Cars around it also submerged. We also have some more video of Highway 101 and what it looked like yesterday. And you can see why it was forced to shut down. Cars were diverted and forced to take city streets only to see that some of those were even flooded as well. Now, thankfully for the homes, authorities say they were able to go into this area and check on residents and say they had safely evacuated. Mm -hmm. uh, evacuation warnings were issued in this area even in Hollister our crews met this family here they have a mini horse goats and a donkey in Hollister and they headed out when their home started to flood <laughs> getting over here we almost did this a few nights ago but when we bought the property we raised our levees up around us you know, another 16 inches so we're way above everybody else but we never thought it would come in from the back side of us and now Rick says they've never seen anything like this before, so he safely got out, but obviously a scary situation. Uh, thankfully, the break in rain yesterday gave crews the opportunity to really take care of the flooding that was in this area. Again, we did see some downpours of rain overnight and into the morning, and like I mentioned, we saw one right now. But thankfully, as we can see, at least in this area, no heavy flooding, especially compared to what we saw uh, yesterday. But again, just driving on 101 going southbound, there is still a lot of debris in the the area. So just want to be extra mindful of that, Gianna. Yeah, what was so tough too, Dawson, is they didn't even have an option to use alternates with all of that flooding extending over onto surface streets. And right. that is an area mm -hmm. a lot of super commuters use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we can see it this morning. A lot of people are using these roads. Yeah, it is a busy route for sure. A lot of people had a Pacheco pass that way. All right, Jocelyn, thank you so much. And stay with us on this first alert weather day as we deal with damage across the Bay Area. You can find us on your phone's app or on our website at kpix.com. Just seeing those, uh, that video from Chopper 5 yesterday over 101, that is tough. And what a scary situation. You're just driving. All of a sudden, you come up on all this flooding and water in the roadway. Exactly. I was up in Sonoma County yesterday and just saw how much 
flooding and ponding there was even around just people's homes. So yeah. I don't even know how they got out of a lot of those homes just because of those issues. So definitely something we're going to be seeing for a couple more days as well. And Jessica, we saw a lot of the storm come down for our commute. You said it's not going to be as bad later, You're but still. right. You know, so this frontal system came in at a really weird hour this morning around 2, 3 a.m. Now what's left is just some major heavy pockets of rain, some lighter conditions too. Let's take